it actually gets dark pretty fast this time of the year. So I'm gonna try and squeeze in a video. Most creative individuals have a clear outlet for their creativity and their interest in creating and writing music is very limited to just one genre, just one style of music. But creativity comes in different quantities. And for those who are extremely creative, they have multiple interests, not only interests in consuming something, but an interest in creating all kinds of different types of music. Now, in terms of your creative resource pool overall, that's a great thing, but it's not such a great thing when it comes to focusing on something and getting it done, making it ready and putting it out there into the world. So although you might be far more creative than the average creative individual or the average musician, you're probably going to struggle with getting anything done, taking something and taking it from start to finish. And you're probably going to be far more scatterbrained and suffer with your attention span than most other musicians will. So while the immense creativity that you have, it holds tremendous potential, but if it's not managed properly, it will most likely go to waste. You're probably going to end up being one of those musicians who has a ton of different projects, a ton of different things going on at the same time, but none of them are ever taken to the finish line. So at first glance, it might seem like there's not much upside to having a ton of creativity. If you're always gonna be unfocused, you have a very short attention span, you're constantly firing on all cylinders, you never get anything done. But I think that's more of a mismanagement problem rather than being the fault of your creativity. Don't blame the creativity when in truth, it's really a management issue. And in life, you're always gonna need management skills because resources and time, those things are always limited. So don't blame the creativity. It's only a positive force, but like many other positive forces, if you don't manage it, if you don't put it to the appropriate context, it has the potential to manifest itself in a negative way. So what do you do? What is the solution? To this issue. Well, it's kind of what we alluded to, which is that you need to restrict, you need to limit your own creativity. And you do that by putting borders and putting fences or frames around one given target. If you're really struggling with this, just start with one song. Pick that as your target and shut everything else out until it's ready. You need to be very strict about this because the moment you allow something else to enter your frame of mind, that's the same moment when the target shifts and you can't move something forward if you're not focused on the target. So you have to limit your focus. Focus on that one track or that one EP or that one album and make that your target. Now, the difficulty about that is that the moment you choose that target, the clock starts ticking and it's ticking towards boredom and familiarity and predictability and it begins to enter the realm of the known, of the familiar. 
And the problem with that is that that's no territory for a creative mind, a creative thinker or a musician or an artist to be. And the more time you spend with your music, the more familiar and predictable it becomes. So you're always fighting the clock. And the more familiar something becomes, the less interested a creative mind tends to be towards that. And that's something creative people don't necessarily understand or realize about themselves. It's that they get bored very easily because naturally their personality tends to lean towards that discovery process, entering the unknown and then making it known. So the moment you start the process of targeting towards that final recording, that's the moment when the hourglass turns. And you need to be aware of that because otherwise you're gonna start blaming the music for things that aren't necessarily true about it. And that's why it's very common for musicians to drop what they're working on. They've been working on it for a long while and now it's familiar, now it's self-evident. It's not exciting or within the creative realm anymore. So they start thinking that it's not good. They start thinking that it's not good enough. And if you spend too much time in that place, then you might make faulty judgments or faulty statements about your own music. And then you might be missing out on its actual potential. So you need to understand that once you start to enter that more objective or neutral frame of mind, that it's a, a natural part of the process and you shouldn't take that as a sign of the music being below your standards or, or for the music to be bad. It surely can mean that, but if you really worked hard on something and there was a spark initially, then it's quite likely that there's at least something there something worth pursuing and something worth seeing to the end. Now, I think it's always important to take what you work on to the finish line. You need to make them ready so that you actually will face the objective truth, the ob objective reality of the music. Confronting that reality is an essential part of what we're trying to do. I don't think an artist can be successful without it. So restrict yourself, create limitations. And once you make those limitations, work hard. And once you hit that wall, you have to power through. You have to fight through the boredom and the familiarity. And if you do that, then you maximize the positive potential outcome of your creativity finished.